Hi and welcome to my channel. So my name is Nienke de Glas. I am a clinical epidemiologist and a medical doctor. And in this video, I will teach you how you can use the revision functionalities in Microsoft Word. So let's get started. So when you are drafting a paper, often you will work in many different versions and you will want to receive feedback from your supervisors or your co-authors or even your peers. And for this, you will often use the revision functions in Microsoft Word. And it's very helpful because sometimes it's extremely annoying when you send out your paper to several co-authors or peers at once and you receive all the feedback in all the different versions of all these people and then you have to make one new version of it. And that can be extremely annoying if you don't know how to use these functions. So let me show you how this works in Microsoft Word. So the functionalities you will be using for this type of revisions can be found under the tab here, Review. So you press this one and here you can find several functions that will be very helpful. So the most important function you will be using is the track changes option and it can be found over here. If you simply press it, it will be turned on and you can see this because it turns a little bit gray here. Then it's important that over here you have the function all markup turned on because if you have only no markup or a simple markup, you will not see everything that changes. So make sure that when you receive a, a document in track changes, you have the all markup function turned on here. So now let me show you what happens when I change something. So let's say I will remove this word and it will say paper instead. So now when you receive this paper back from someone else, you can see what has been removed, what has been added, and you can decide yourself what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. And doing this works as follows. You can simply select the part that you want to keep or don't keep. And here you can simply press reject or accept. And you can use this function for a large number of text, even for whole, the whole document, if you would want that. Um, or you can only do the, uh, or you can only accept or reject the changes one by one. Another way to do this is to press the right uh, mouse button and then here click on accept insertion or reject insertion. So this is an insertion because there's a new word. And if I would do this here, you would see it's accept deletion or reject for deletion. So let's see what happens when I do this. I select the whole sentence, click accept. And then you see Word already tells you that there are no more track changes in your document and you have now a new version. And what I always like to do is that I will now save this as a new version because I don't want to uh, get all the version numbers mixed up. So now I will name this one test version number two. Another way that you can use the review button in Word when you are working on different versions of a manuscript with many different people is the comments button. And this is also very helpful if you are working on different versions and want to upgrade your paper. So for example, if I would be a co-author of the paper and this is your paper and I would not agree with this thing, but I want to have some discussion about it, I can use a comment. Then you see here, there's a new part that pops up. Now I can say, I do not agree. I think you should instead uh, state that it is a document just to give you an, uh, an idea of how this works. So nothing has changed in the text, but I have said, well, I think you should some do something else. Or alternatively, if I would make a large insertion or if I would change something in the text, here I could use the comments to explain why I would have done that as a, as a reviewer or as a co-author. So this is something that's very helpful. And now if you would receive this document and you would see my comment and you would want to answer on it and send it send back to me, then here you can even use the reply option, reply and say, uh, I will keep it anyways, uh, for example. And here you can answer uh, the question of the person. And a nice thing here is that you can also see uh, who has uh, given you this comment. Because at some point you will have maybe even 10 co-authors who have commented on your paper. And you will want to see which comment came from which co-author. That's really helpful if you are uh, discussing this. If you would want to resolve the comment but still keep it so that you can show the co-author what you have done, then you could use here the resolve button. And if you do that, it will stay in your document, but a bit more gray. So then the co-author will see, well, it has been resolved, but still we can see what has been said about this. 
I cannot do this right now because I'm answering myself. So obviously that does not work. Alternatively, if you would want to remove the comment, you go with the mouse to the uh, comment, click with your right button and then here click delete comment. And you can see now it's gone. And again, if I do that for the first one, it's gone. Now there are no more comments here. So again, this is a very uh, easy way to work in different versions and discuss a bit what you're doing. So third of all, I would like to show you what happens if you receive many different versions of a paper. Because it can be so annoying uh, when you are working with so many people together and they are all at the same time uh, commenting on your paper and sending you uh, replies on your paper. So this can be found over here in the compare button. And you press the compare function. You can use either compare or combine. And personally, I like to use combine always because it gives you immediately the option to accept or not accept changes that have been made. So let's see what happens if we do that. So when you press the combine option, this is what you will see. And you will open the document in place here. So test version one and then here. It, you will see that it will show you all the recent documents you've been opening. So test version 2. And you can also say that you want to uh, show which, uh, which changes came from which document. You, so you can say this was test version 1 or this was uh, version A. And this was test version 2, version B. You press OK. Now you'll get a new document. And you will see on the sides what the original uh, documents showed you. But also here it gives you a new combined document. And personally I always close these parts here on the side because it just distracts me. And I will have one document where it all shows up as track changes at once. And if I go over it with my mouse I can see from which document it originated. So now you can see here test version 1, person A said this and this. While person 2 said this and this. So that's very helpful. Now if I close all these ones, it's important that you now see that here uh, the document's name is combine result 2. So this means that it's a new document, so you need to save it and you need to give it a name. So you can say uh, test version 3 for example. So personally I am a big fan of using version numbers. Because when you send out, for example, version 1, you will already be working on version 2 because you have received some comments from someone else. And at some point you will lose track of which version you're working on now. So I would advise you to always use versions, for example, uh, just 1, 2, 3, or maybe even 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. And then when you send out the whole new one, then call it number 2. That's something I do. But an alternative is that you use dates to start the document with. So, for example, start with a date and then give the title of the document and your document name. That can help you to uh, organize it, uh, uh, organize by date in your folders. So there are several ways to do this, but it's important that you have some sort of a system for working with versions. Otherwise you will get it all mixed up. So here you see what happens. I have now saved the new document as version number three, and I have the uh, all the track changes of the two different versions combined in one. And again, I can simply use the check changes option. So I can use accept or reject and then continue working on this next version. So there you go. I hope this is helpful. And I've given you an overview on how you can use the different versions to work on your manuscript with different co-authors in Microsoft Word. So please let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, I would be really grateful if you would subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. So I hope to see you next time.